Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Um, firstly, I'd like to um, apologize personally on behalf of my boss, um, who's the ECD of Google Creative Lab, Steve Renakis, who couldn't be here today to give this presentation. And thank, so secondly, thank you for having me. Um, it's a um, pleasure to be here on stage, um, especially with some of the, the big names in the industry. Actually, um, my talk today is a little bit about technology and how that can power creativity, so slightly different to, to what's written in the book, um, and how, in particular, how we can use technology to inspire, to educate, and to, tr and to transform. And more importantly, how we can transform in order to spark um, and inspire for the next generation. So what is Creative Lab? Um, we're a small team. We're based around the world in four offices. It's San Fran, New York, London, and Sydney. And our aim is to take a step back, look at Google, and think and, and have a little chance to rethink about how we communicate its intentions, its ideals, and its innovations. And we call that inventing the future. So what do we believe? Um, there's two things. Everything we do starts with technology, and everything ends with the user. And our job is just to make sure those two things meet. And we have this box, and on the box is technology. And inside are all of Google's fantastic products, surfaces, from software to hardware, and that's what we do. We go to work each day, we roll up our sleeves, we put our hands in this box, and we play with the technology. And it's quite an amazing thing. So we need to take that technology, we need to leverage it, and we need to take all the possibilities it offers and bring that to the user. And the most important thing is we want to bring it to the user in a very unconventional way. And what we do, we come to work each day, and we think about how we do that. So what we try to do is break the rules, we try to redefine the medium, and what's really important is to put the user at the center, to make the user a hero. And last but not least is we let the technology speak for itself. And who are we? We're a, we're a small team, um, but we're a diverse team. We're writers, we're designers, we're filmmakers, we're coders, we're st strategists, we're marketing managers, we're producers. And because we're a small team and we work on a, a variety of projects, it's really important that we have partnerships. And as I take you through some of our work, you'll get an, an understanding of the sort of people that we partner with. And how do we work? Um, we're, we're, we're thinkers, but we spend most of our time making. We're, we just make. So when we have an idea, what will the poster look like? When we have an idea, what will the film look like? Um, and obviously, we use code, so we prototype, and we, we, we get it wrong, and then we do it again, and we're constantly iterating. And like Bob said earlier, and this is the way in which we sell ideas internally. So we go to the respective clients, we go to the respective decision makers, and we say, here's an idea. Here's what it would look like as a poster. Here's what it would look like as a film. And here is how it would actually work. And ultimately, what we do is remind the world about what they love about Google. So what does that all mean? So um, I prepared four projects that we recently worked on, and instead of me talking about them. I've prepared some films, so they'll, the films will do a better job than I would. So um, I've, got, I've got four films for you today. Each film ha um, starts off with a teaser film, the launch film that we launched with. And um, there are two preceding slides. The first slide is about principles that we stand by. And before I show you the project, I'll explain the principle and a question that we asked ourselves. And the question could only be answered because of technology. And I think that's a really important thing, how technology powers our creativity. So as I, as I go through, I'll, I'll explain those two slides, and then I'll just run the films from the, um, from the launch film right through to the summary film. So the first principle is never fail to fail. We go to work each day, and we spend most of our time getting things wrong. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. We embrace failure. Um, I think that's, um, that's because we go big with our ideas. We, we go audacious. And um, the next idea I'm going to show you, when we first started out, it just didn't work. Um, the technology was there, but it couldn't quite deliver on what it needed to be. So it's an example how we spent days, weeks, months failing. And then ultimately, we, um, we worked in Chrome, and we took WebSockets. Um, one of the um, technologies that Chrome supports, and we built upon it, and it made a piece of technology that could actually um, run the idea that we, that we tried to solve. So this is the first project. How do you create a music platform that allows people from all over the world to play together through a browser? And one thing I really want to reiterate there is through a browser. 
So this is about, it's an idea called Jam with Chrome. And I'll just show you what it looks like. And people can play music with each other from all over the world. And the most important thing here is all through a browser. So if I've got fast connection speed, and you're on the other side of the world, and you've got slow connection speed, how are we ever going to be in sync? And that's what technology allowed us to do. Like I said before, we, we had web so sockets. We built on top of that. And we built an immediate real-time playback system that allowed musicians to sync. So I'll, I'll take you through some of the actual key frames of the site. So here you'd pick an instrument. Here are the drum kits. And there's 19 different instruments, keyboard. And this kind of this project democratizes music as well, because regardless of what level, you could interact with it. So whether you had no idea about music, you could still go on there and play simple mode, or you could go on and play professional mode, which you'll see here with all the details of, of the chords, etc. And then I'll take you on to um, the film that we launched with. And we wanted a hero for this film, and we wanted this film to, to gain traction very quickly. Um, so we looked on the, um, on the web, and we tried to associate our film with um, somebody who was already famous. So you might recognize his character, um, one of the internet's most famous musicians. You're probably all familiar with Keyboard Cat. So we recruited Keyboard Cat. Um, and we brought Keyboard Cat to Google and said, would you like to take part of our film? And then Keyboard Cat entered our world in the same art direction in the virtual space, became the hero of our film. And this time around, Keyboard Cat can invite its friends to, to come and play and essentially jam um, on Jam with Chrome. So that's Jam with Chrome. That's real-time collaboration through a browser. Um, and then there'll be some repetition, but I'll show you the summary film that, that will explain the whole project from beginning to end. It's about three minutes. To get more people experiencing the power and magic of Chrome, we created a simple and fun experience that allows users to play live music with friends wherever they are. We built Jam with Chrome. Users choose from 19 virtual instruments. We crafted their design to make them feel inviting and easy enough for anyone to use. It was also important they sounded real. So rather than rely on ready-made audio tracks, we recorded real instruments and created over 1,000 original samples. Whether using easy mode and one of the four autoplay functions, or playing note by note with your computer keyboard using Pro Mode, anyone can get stuck in quickly. And when the users want to start a band, they simply share a URL. You can also switch up the tempo, key and instruments to jam in any musical genre. All of this was powered by the groundbreaking technology supported by Chrome. We brought the instrument's visuals to life using CSS3, Canvas and SVG. We also used web audio for high quality, responsive and realistic sound, as well as web sockets 
App Engine and Go Backend programming to allow real-time communication. On the first day alone, over half a million people visited Jam. and bands started coming together in over 150 countries. We launched with a virtual version of the internet's most famous musician, jamming with some new friends. People quickly made the technology their own, using it in unexpected ways. And Muse fans created cheat sheets for jamming along to their favorite tracks. Jam has inspired millions of people. We captured their imagination with a platform that makes it possible to play music with anyone, anywhere in the world. All through a browser called Chrome. The second principle that takes me into the second project is launch early and iterate. And at Google, we, we, um, we don't believe in putting polished products out there. We believe in having those products or those pieces of software and putting them out unfinished. And I think that says a lot about our relationships with our users. Um, we're there to say we're making things and we're making things that are for you, but we're also here to listen. We're here and we want you to take part in the process. And we want you to tell us what's good about it and what's bad about it. And we're together, we're going to improve it and make it better. So beta is a really important thing for us. Gmail was famously in beta for five years. Chrome was in beta for one year. And this next project was only in beta for three months. But what we learned from that three months was, was an amazing thing. And um, what's really good about it, it was a physical space in beta. So something, it's, it's taking the kind of behavior that we have in software and applying that to a physical space. So the second project started off with how can we educate the world about the power of the web? And the web's an amazing thing, but all the technology is kind of locked behind our browser, behind the glass. And we had an idea about removing the glass and bringing that technology to life, the, the extraordinary workings of the internet, and how can we make people understand its magic? So um, it's a project called WebLab. You may have heard of it. And, um, it started off as a physical exhibition. We went to, um, earlier I mentioned partners, and I'll explain um, how this came to be. We went to the London Science Museum, and their job is to make sense of the science that shapes our lives. So together we worked on an exhibition to make sense of how the internet works, because obviously that's a really important science that shapes our lives. And we created a physical um, exhibition in one venue in London, which had five physical Chrome experiments, and what they essentially did was they were interactive pieces that you could get your hands on and, get, and really understand the mechanisms um, um, of, of the web. And this is what the space looks like. It's, um, it's meant to look like a kind of lab. So it had those, it, it didn't have a finish um, to it that was particularly polished. It looked like wireframe. Um, it didn't have the skin that some other exhibitions would, would have. Um, and so there's a series of experiments in there. Here are our sketch bots that you can send a picture of your face to, and it will draw it in the sand. Um, here are musical instruments that you can play with, um, with other people in real time. And this is Data Tracer that explains to you um, where data comes from and how fast it travels. But what we did, we went to our box of technology, and we thought, what could technology do for this project? And what technology could do through the power of Chrome was make this physical exhibition accessible to the world. So that's what we did. We opened it up to the world online. So one single exhibition is actually a world, a world first. It became a global exhibition. So anyone, anywhere in the world would come to this through the, through the browser and really get their hands on these experiments. And I'll quickly just show you the launch film. Thank you.
I think what was great about Web Lab is that as a physical space, it was um, visited by, I think to date, because it lasts for a year, approximately half a million people. But as um, a place that you can visit online, it's been visited by approximately six million. So it just gives you an idea of um, what the web can do and what technology can do. It um, ultimately became almost like the largest classroom on the planet. And this is a case study film. Since its launch in 2008, the Chrome browser has evolved and continues to push the potential of what you can do on the web. This means that it's no longer just a simple window to information. Today, the advanced features in Chrome allow us to do so much more, like play with people across the world, communicate with friends far away, and connect us to all sorts of physical devices. We wanted to let people know about these features so that we could inspire new users onto Chrome. What if we take these everyday invisible technologies and make them tangible? In collaboration with the London Science Museum, who are committed to educating people about the science that shapes our lives, we did just that, allowing people to get their hands on these features, and in doing so, learn how the web works whilst experiencing the power of Chrome. Together, we created WebLab, a first-of-its-kind global exhibition featuring five interactive physical experiments made accessible to the world online, allowing anyone, anywhere in the world, to access WebLab through a browser. The first of the five Chrome experiments is Universal Orchestra, where visitors make live music with people from across the world and experience how the web enables real-time collaboration. In Teleporter, visitors are instantly transported thousands of miles away through a series of 360-degree live streams, from an underwater shark tank in South Africa to a miniature airport in Germany. In Sketchbox, Visitors can have their portrait drawn in the sand by a robot, demonstrating how the web translates information. In Data Tracer, visitors watch the epic journey that images take across the web by tracing routes through the internet's vast network of servers to show where information lives. On entering the lab, both online and museum visitors receive a uniquely generated lab tag, a visual representation of themselves within WebLab and a place to save everything they create. LabTag Explorer allows visitors to see how information on the web is organized by exploring WebLab's global community and browsing visitors' creations, including their own. In July 2012, we launched WebLab in Beta, a world first for a physical exhibition. Thanks to the user's feedback, we improved the experiments and made WebLab better. During the three-month testing phase, WebLab was experienced by 2.5 million online visitors from over 200 countries and 150,000 museum visitors, resulting in over 1 million user-generated creations, from sketchbot portraits to collaborative music tracks. WebLab continues 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, until summer 2013, open to the world online, live from the Science Museum London. So that's Web Lab, and if you're ever in London, um, it's still open, so um, I urge you to pop down and have a look, or if you're anywhere else in the world, visit um, chromewebblab.com. Um, and the next principle is open will win, and obviously we embrace open technology, which includes open source software, and we actively release the, the code um, with some of our projects, and we actively support um, some of the open source um, work that's out there being done by the open source communities. Um, and this next project wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for a vital piece of open source um, code. So I'll take you through onto the next project. And it's, um, it came about about asking ourselves the question, how do we demonstrate the cross-platform capabilities of Chrome across multiple devices? So simply put, there's Chrome on your mobile device and there's Chrome on your desktop. And how do we talk simply about the two? Um, A, they exist on both platforms, and secondly, they, they connect with each other. So here's a fun little project called SuperSync Sports, and it's about turning your mobile device into a games controller. So a very, very simple thought, um, and essentially became a really cool toy. And here's a launch film. Get ready to race! <laughs> Run, run, 
Run, run! Swim, 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 swim! Cycle, 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 cycle! And a bit more about the um, project in the summary film. Since it launched in 2008, Google Chrome continues to push the web forward. In 2012, the browser was released on mobile. To let people know and showcase what Chrome can do when it's synced across devices, we created a simple gaming experience that starts on desktop and connects to mobile. It's a game that lets you sync your mobile to your computer, turning it into a game controller too. Run, cycle, swim! First, select a sport, then decide if you want to play solo or with friends. To sync, simply enter the code on your desktop into your mobile web browser. That's it. Your mobile has now become a game controller. Use the arrow pad to pick one of 50 different athletes, including a pheasant that owns a yacht, a romantic fireplace, a sporty watermelon, and the universe itself. Oh, my little champions. Think of it as a mini triathlon for your hands. Use the touchscreen on your mobile to run with your fingers, swim with your thumb, cycle with your fingertips. You can grab up to three friends and play on the same screen, and the world's fastest athletes will join the global leaderboard. The desktop and mobile screens are simply synced together over Wi-Fi in the cloud. <laughs> Wi-Fi. We optimise the experience for all compatible <laughs> browsers and all compatible devices, and all the combinations you can make between them taking into account not only the software, but also the different shapes and orientations of the mobile devices. We launched with a video on YouTube and a series of short films about some of our favorite athletes. Within six weeks of launch, the site had one million visitors from over 160 countries. The average game session was over seven minutes long and over 25,000 social posts were made. Supermobile Super Connected Chrome Experiment. Get ready to race! That's Super Sync Sports. And the last principle, and something that um, these are the kind of products that really get us out of bed in the morning, are the ones that make it matter. So, um, um, where we can use technology for good, where technology can be used to impact society and, and potentially change the world. Um, so, the next project. And this is the last project I'll be sharing with you today is how do you create a global platform that allows the youth to, be, to put forward ideas that one day might go on to change the world? And we have a project called um, Science Fair, and it's a global online competition where 13 to 18 year olds can go online, speak to some leading scientists, be inspired, be educated, and have the opportunity to, to submit an idea. Um, and I'll just take you through um, the poster that we made for it. And I really like this, and I'll, I'll take you through um, the insight as well. But you're never too young to change the world was the call to action to those 13 to 18 year old students. And what's really powerful is that, um, born from a truth, that the light bulb, the telephone, and the alphabet for the blind were all conceived um, from a very young age. So Edison came up with his first thoughts about the light bulb at the age of 14. Um, Bell came up with his, his first thoughts about the telephone at age 18, and the same with Braille at the, at the end of age 16. Um, so we created these um, very striking posters. Um, these went to schools across the world to, to get kids um, excited about this opportunity. And then we put the question to them. It's, um, it's kind of, it's your, your chance to change the world. So we did a, a, a site. And on here, like I mentioned before, they had the opportunity to, to use G+, to use YouTube. Um, to connect with the, with the competition, to connect with scientists, etc. And here's the, um, the launch film.
And what's really remarkable about that is that last year, um, the winner was a young 17-year-old from um, California. Her name was Brittany. And she came up with a cloud-based service that could detect um, malignant um, cancerous tumors to um, a, su a success rate of 99%. So her idea is now going on to actually change the world, which is a very powerful thing. Um, so, and that was the last project, and I really like that last project because it shows how technology can be used to inspire, to educate, and ultimately transform. So I leave you with a thought. Um, let technology power your creativity. Take that box and open it up. Roll your sleeves up and get your hands dirty. There's loads of cool stuff that's out there. We're working in this industry in, a, in, a, in an amazing age. Um, so we should all embrace that and, and really kind of fulfill the, the potential of the web and all those fantastic technologies, um, because ultimately you'll become a storyteller with superpowers. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. This Thank you. Great.